Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Zephyr Vlog thing. My name is Bosfark, and I'm coming to you through the power of the internet and from Korea, basically. So, let me move in a bit closer. Here is the thing. I'm going to start off with some crappy news that I found out today, or that just hit me, actually, today. It's been there for about, this has been happening for about maybe the past month or something, okay? So, and then I'm going to end it off on a happier note, to just remind myself of why I'm here, right? So, the Korean government has passed a new law that originally, here's the thing, originally it was all South Africans that's coming to teach here need to provide a proof of having their high school years and their university years being uh, taught in English. Like they went to an English school and an English university. And that was just aimed at South Africans for like two or three weeks. And I've done a bit of research on it just like 20, 30 minutes ago. And apparently they've changed the rule to allow, to, uh, to say everyone needs to provide proof that they have been taught in English uh, for at least high school years again from uh, grade 8 in South Africa up until the end of university. Um, grade 8 is... What age was I in grade? I was grade... I was... 14? 15? 14 in grade 8. So from 14 years of age up until 22, 23 at least. Uh, or 22, at least that amount of time uh, being taught in English. Okay, so it's turned, it's turned away from South Africans to everyone. Now, they're still targeting South Africans, the Korean government. Don't get me wrong. And it pains my heart to share this with you guys uh, because I really, really love South Korea. I really do. And this is just, I understand where they're coming from, okay? This is just their way of saying, you know what, we need to control the types of teachers coming, like the quality of teachers coming into South Korea. Uh, the fact that they are they started off targeting South Africans only gets a little bit on my nerves, but now they've covered everyone, but they're still technically still... I mean, they're not going to ask an American, hey, show us proof that you were taught in English, right? Um, maybe if they were Spanish-American or whatever, Ameri Spanish-American, American-Spanish, Spanish-American. You know, prob then probably they'll ask, but generally they will ask you if you're South African, to show proof that you have been taught in English for most of your school school career, your school going life, your uh, your teens till mid twenties. The, t the things that you learned, you have to learn them in English. That's what they want. So I get where they're coming from. They really, like I said, they really want to upgrade the the the, the quality of teachers in South Africa. They really do. So that's cool. I mean, uh, in South Africa, in South Korea, that's cool. I understand that completely. But I mean, if they want to keep out the people who talks like this and are uh, and are very happy to being here in East Korea, you know, if they if they if they is want to target the people that speaks like this, then then I understand. You know, then 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 I understand completely. Uh, they want to weed out the bad people. The problem is, I've met a couple of South Africans, right? Not going to mention any names. I know a couple of South Africans. Again, no one, let, let me say, in the bigger cities. Not from my small town, in case any of the South Africans in my small town is watching. <laughs> but I've met a couple of them, and their English is bad, man. They've been to an English school, to an English university. Their English is bad. Is bad. It's, and I've been to an Afrikaans school. I've been, 
I've had the subject English since the age of nine, right? And I went to, uh, I took all my university subjects in English and all that. So that's, the university part is covered. It's the school going part that's going to kill me. Um, not kill me, but you know what I mean. It's going to get to me. And the, so back to the South Africans that I've met. There's usually like a couple of different type of foreigners in Korea. Those that are not willing to accept the change the new country is bringing, uh, they're experiencing in the new country. Usually these are the very um, angry and, oh, Korea sucks, they do this and this and this and uh, how does this work and why do, they, why do they drink so much and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, the, the angry people that can't change with the country or with the situation or surroundings they're in. They can't change with that. Then there's the people who loves Korea to no end. Korea can do no wrong. And then there's the people that basically they love Korea and they accept it. They accept it. It's Korea is perfect in its imperfections. That's what I'm saying. And I fall. I see myself as roughly like either group two or three. I love Korea to no end. But I know some of its shortcomings and everything, but I accept it because it's Korea. I mean, I can't change anything. And I know this video won't change anything, but I, th I just need to get it off my heart. Um, so they're trying to weed out the haters in South Korea and the people that can't really speak English, right? Um, I've told a couple of these people who I've met is like, if you don't like this country, then why the hell don't you just get on a plane tonight and leave? And they're like, no, but I need the money, blah, blah, blah. It's those kind of people Korea wants to get rid of, rid of right? The Korean government. It's those kind of people. It's really, it's, it gets on my nerves. And then there's, uh, the English speaking South Africans who went to an English school and all that. And Believe it or not, I speak better English than they do. I mean, just watch my videos. Watch w watch at my videos. You see, th that's the thing. Just look at my videos. I, my English, uh, the difference between my videos and, and uh, me when I'm teaching is, when I'm teaching, I'm focused on the language. With my videos, I'm just talking. Whatever comes out, comes out. Blech it comes out, you know, out of my mouth. And uh, oh, that could be used as a bad gif. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, like on these videos, my English isn't that good. But even if you look at these videos, keep in mind that there are people, English speaking South Africans in Korea, that's got a worse grasp on the English language than I do, okay? But they're allowed to teach here because they've had, uh, most of their education was in English while they were growing up. Most, if not all of it. And that works on my nerves because I really love this country. I've, it's the first time that I've started teaching in my entire life and I did not know that teaching could bring such joy and uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Such joy and enrichment in my life, right? I've learned so many things from these kids that I never thought I would learn from kids to begin with, right? And I love the country. I want to stay here. I want to teach. I want to try and be the best teacher I'm going to be, but apparently the law will be in full effect in, uh, in 2017. Then Korea would have like, um, that would be the law just starting out everywhere. Like uh, the people still here in Korea, if they get extended, they've got until 2017. That's what I figured out roughly. Um, that's how long they've got to stay here. So I've got until 2017 to stay here, make it the best three years of my life, two more three years, including this year of my life. And I'm going to be the best teacher I'm going to be. I'm going to, what am I saying? I'm going to be the 
best teacher that I can possibly be for these kids because I know coming from South Africa what lack of education can do to someone right um, I've had a couple of jobs in South Africa where I worked with previously disadvantaged people and they were clever they were intelligent people but because they did not have an education they were stuck in the jobs that they had so it's it's bad right I know what a lack of education can do to someone and I also know the amount of doors that the it's a copious amount of doors that will open for these kids if they learn English I understand that and that's my job that is my job here in Korea and it and it fills me with joy when I see these kids progress through the entire year I mean the first two or three months while I was here in Korea last year it's like I don't think I'm teaching these kids anything but as the year progressed and as it went on it dawned on me these kids are actually learning something and I mean I've got I've got brilliant students. I'm probably one of the few lucky ones that uh, uh, got a brilliant school, brilliant students, brilliant teachers. They understand me. We get each other. Where it's like I am very lucky. I'm of the lucky few that actually got the school. Not that I, not that they wanted, but what they deserved and needed. That's why. That's where I'm lucky. And my options now. If, if they decide to slam down on this by the end of this year, right? So I've got another year, at least another year here in Korea. So my options are either going big on YouTube, as I'm trying, <laughs> uh, marrying a Korean girl, and that's basically my two options, right? Um, let's go with the first one big on YouTube share these videos please share these videos gaming videos anything just share the hell out of them this is the first time I'm asking for it hopefully YouTube doesn't flag me for this but this is the first time I'm asking you guys South Africans gamers in Korea um, the American friends that I've made the British friends that I've made everyone even if you don't like me just share these videos help me out right so that's the YouTube thing covered um, the second thing, uh, the second one is marrying a Korean girl. Here's one problem though. It's not a problem. I, I take pride in this. I will marry for love, not to, not for convenience, right? Um, so that's kind of difficult. Uh, I want to love the girl first before I ask her to marry me. I don't think that's too tall of an order. <laughs> To ask the girl, you know, to love the girl first before I ask her to marry me. Not like, hey babe, you want to get married? I want to stay in Korea. No, that's not how I am, right? So, yeah, that's it. Um, by the end of this year, if that's the minimum, if 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 by the end of this year the Korean government slams down on these things in South Africa and all that, uh, so that is a big issue, really. I'm kind of stressing out here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm kind of stressing out here. Um, and I want to say thank you for the people who's watching this, and thank you in advance for the people who will share this video. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now on to some better news, or some happier news, because this is getting me down. Talking about, talking about this is getting me down. Um, so last week with my kids we were playing the versus game now it's basically it's basically a poll so you I you put up two things on the on the screen like let's say one of the choices was Europe versus America and they have a sheet of paper with their name on it and they say Europe or America or you know uh, ice cream versus donuts and they choose one and that's a good game to play because then you can figure out what your kids like and what their personalities are like and it can be you can ask anything simple things versus like uh, simple things like um watching a movie versus music you know s simple things just to gauge how you can teach your kids um i'm going to start implementing that at least two or three times per semester 
to see so that I can cater my lessons for my kids, right? Um, so one of the options was uh, Colby versus some Gipsol. Colby versus some Gipsol. Um, now, Colby is basically a grilled dish made with marinated beef or pork, right? Um, the thing is why I'm Wikipediaing this is because I, they put, in Korea, they put meat in front of me and I eat it. I don't care what it is. So, galbi is marinated beef or pork. And the other one was some, some gipsol. I think that's how you pronounce it. Some gipsol. That's kind of like a stir fry thing. Uh, not a stir fry, like meat mixed with, um, let's see. Yeah, oh, I spelled some gifts all wrong. It's, again, it, it's pork that you wrap in, uh, like lettuce or salad leaf, whatever, and you eat that. That's some gypsol, and galbi is marinated beef or pork. So let me just get back to the video. Um, so, you know, and I'm like, ah, I should, uh, I, I love some gypsol more. Galbi, eh, it's okay, but some gypsol, that's good. And one of the kids came up to me, and he pointed to another kid, and he's like, father restaurant, his father, his restaurant. And it's galbi, galbi restaurant. And he looked at me, and he's like, Galbi, 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 Galbi. And I look at him, I'm like, okay, I'm going to choose Galbi then, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a good thing. Mr. Philippines was the kid's name because his mother's from the Philippines, and that's his nickname, Mr. Philippines. Um, so, yeah, good note ending this. I love teaching. Thank you again for watching these videos, really, from the... Yeah, this is my heart. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for watching these videos. And please, leave a like and share. You don't even have to subscribe. Just like the video and share it. I don't really mind about the subscriptions. Well, I do, but you know what I mean. Like and share this video. Um, spread the news and uh, spread the love. So, my name... Thank you for watching again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My name has been Bosvark, and until next time, you should have a good one.